This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering, news and articles. Hey everybody, this is Andrew here, A. McGreeny on Twitter. Uh, I'm here to show you a redux of my rebuilt Gliss of the Trader deck. Alright everybody, so as I said, this is a rebuild of a Glissa deck I did at Philly for Commander decks. Um, starting off, uh, I've been actually on a current project of getting all of my commanders altered. This one was done by my friend Dave Lee, uh, who goes by Durfington on Twitter and other places. Uh, he's up in Canada, so he helped pimp out my commander like this. Um, one of the things I do is I keep an extra in case it's in a different language or someone wants to read what it says or if it gets tucked or put to my hand then I have a, a version that I don't have to take out of the plastic sleeve so that's her version of herself. Um, the land package in this current build runs 36 lands. I have 10 swamps and 7 forests. So you can see you know, some of that. And let's see. So not a lot of basics, and there's a specific reason. I use Hermit Druid in this build, but it's not particularly to abuse the crap out of it. So you can see uh, some of the other specialized lands I use in this. Uh, I have a bunch of dual colored, so I get a Verdant Catacombs that leads into my uh, German Bayou. Um, and you have a Filter Land, your Command Tower, uh, Land of War Wastes. Tainted wood, uh, reflecting pool works well, and then I get into some more specified lands that uh, help towards the deck in certain ways. Uh, petrified field helps, especially in the case that since this is a dredge reanimator build, um, in case I drop something that I really really need at some point, I'll you know I could use this to kind of get one of them back. Uh, Let's see, this works, Swarthgoss works really well once I get a good amount of cards in my graveyard because he becomes a, uh, a pretty big, pretty big beater. Um, Ink Moth Nexus has led to, as I said in the last video, uh, a bunch of surprise kills, uh, especially with some of the equipment that I run in here. Uh, you'll make notice, I guess, once you're through the lands, I don't run, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Cabal Coffers that much. Um, I used to and it just got really dumb so I took it out and I built this a little bit differently because of that. So uh, the Artifact Lands, uh, Temple for two. Phi Tower works really well to respond to certain things by uh, you know sacrificing something. You know someone tries to take care of a, a threat on the board for me. Uh, Winding Canyons helps flash in certain things uh, at the end of the people's turns. I've done it in combat when you know someone's swinging at me with a you know a ground-based creature. I'll, I'll flash in Glissa and take it out. So it kind of makes people sad. Uh, Urborg, as I said, I don't run coffers anymore, but there are certain creatures in here, creatures, equipment, and other stuff that that revolve around this. So it's not as abusive as it used to be. Uh, salvage pretty much runs as a dredge card. Uh, there's a bunch of them in here, so you'll see them come through. I didn't want to put them in a specific spot, so. Uh, Reliquary Tower, because who doesn't love having, you know, Nordic large amounts of cards in their hand? And then finally, we have Vesuva, which helps copy, you know, anything on the board or if I need an extra color or something that, that'll help out. So there's a pretty big suite of cards that help put things in the graveyard here. Uh, this has been my tech in a bunch of my decks. Uh, it helps to neuter other people's decks while also accelerating my own board position. Uh, getting this out on turn one is generally really hard to deal with, and especially with Glissa's ability, it just keeps happening. So people really hate this card around me. Uh, Corpse Connoisseur helps me figure out, you know, putting something in the graveyard for reanimating at a later time, so that helps out a lot. 
Uh, buried Alive, same thing, except with three. So that really speeds things up. As I said, this deck you know, has a good amount of non-basics for Hermadruid. Um, you know, I don't run like the typical you know, two to three that you see in builds with him, so he's not as good as he could be, but generally people take notice when he hits the board. Uh, Undead Gladiator works very, very well with any of the dredge cards that I have in here, being able to cycle him down, dredge, and then uh, discarding the dredger in order to bring him back to my hand at my upkeep is really, really good. So, another little piece of tech. And then, of course, some of the dredgers, you know, Grave Troll, uh, Stinkweed. These are, of course, the, you know, I put the biggest ones in here. Um, and then you have my reanimation suite, which revolves around, you know, bringing cards out of the graveyard. You know, you have your reanimate. Uh, victimize, which helps, you know, pretty much like post combat. If something's still there, I can bring them in tapped. Uh, Life from Alone, another dredge card, which helps, especially once I've really started to, to mill out the deck. It makes it really quick. Uh, Exhum is really funny when I opt to discard something like Shieldred, the uh, the first roll of the game, and then you know turn to drop this down or something. People people tend to get sad. Uh, Rift Sweeper is a piece of tech because you know graveyard decks tend to get their graveyards exiled a lot. So if I need that one thing. I'll bring this guy and I'll do a whole bunch of shenanigans in terms of bringing him in and out of the graveyard in order to get as many cards back as I can. So that's helped out a good time. Shieldred, of course, is one of the flagship creatures in the deck. You know, it's able to be potted up, which is something I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, she just tends to sit there and just ruin people's board states, which is awesome. So, enemy dead. Uh, Eternal Witness helps for certain shenanigans. You know, there's no real combos based around her, but there have been uh, one time, you know, before I took out Coffers, playing her to bring back uh, a card to sacrifice her, bring her back with um, bring her back with Nim Death Mantle, and then continue the cycle around for as much mana as I had it was a really interesting combination. But I've since taken Coffers out, so that doesn't happen. Uh, threshold gets hit really easy in this deck. You know, usually about three or four. Turn two, three, four, I'll have enough, so I'll be able to bring something out with the, this. Unearth, you know, there's a bunch of creatures in here that are below the casting cost three, so I'll be able to bring them back. And there's also the dredge element with the cycle. Uh, Innocent Blood, this was the card I was speaking of with uh, Eternal Witness being able to just kind of burn through other people's boards without actually touching mine at all. So that was one of the unfair elements. I was like, ah, that's not, you know, so nice. So um, then we get into some of the removal cards. You know, Innocent Blood was the first of which, uh, Putrefy. Obviously, spot removes something right off the board, and especially the fact that it targets artifacts really helps. Um, Chainer's Edict. Yeah. Flushbag Marauder helps kind of bring a whole bunch of, uh, if you don't know, this deck is built around uh, having a toolbox of artifacts that can be called up through Gliss's ability um, to help deal with certain board states. So having a lot of cards that spot remove or sacrifice other people's creatures helps to really bring those cards back into my hand and you know being able to put them out again. So Grave Pact, of course, kind of puts that up exponentially. Uh, Diabolic. Butcher is, you know, a great pact on stick. Sangromancer is a, a tech card because a lot of people are uh, losing a lot of creatures and in my playgroups a lot of people tend to discard down a lot until they get a reliquary tower so this kind of helps to kind of gain a little extra steam against the people that are just coming right at me. Uh, consuming Vapors, you know, Sack with Rebound. Then we get into some of the uh, toolbox artifacts that I spoke of earlier. Um, Capsule works great into, you know, getting people to get rid of cards and recur other artifacts, including itself, because the way it trigger stacks. Um, it's really good. And then Death Mantle has been crazy. Um, you know, being able to recur just about anything, you know, especially with responding to sacking to Phyrexian Tower makes it really, really good. Um, 
alter helps to really spot remove a lot of things. I had a situation where um, I had a kid that was trying to beat me out and I equipped Glissa and again with Cabal Coffers I was able to sacrifice her and bring her back multiple times uh, to mill the kid out entirely just for that. It was pretty wild. Uh, Pything Needle is good to flash up and put down to take care of someone's general or a particular planeswalker that's causing trouble. Soul Ring, of course, you know, turn one. The turn one move that everybody knows all too well. So Horizon Spell Bomb helps to, you know, get me a land, uh, draw a card, or dredge out more cards if needed. Uh, Mind Stone, same thing. Mana and draw and or dredge. Uh, Ratchet Bomb's a new piece that's been great against token decks, especially you know on a massive scale. Uh, I'm able to bring back a whole bunch of artifacts from the graveyard based on Gliss's ability with you know just a single tap. And then we get in Birthing Pod. You know this deck works really really well without it. It has a really low mana curve across the board, but having Birthing Pod in here helps to you know turn speed up things and also get kind of more nutty uh, play conditions so you know everybody knows birthing pod by now so my lone one casting cost uh, this guy helps with uh, poison counters he helps with planeswalkers a whole bunch of things and is recurrable uh, this guy's a piling needle on a stick so being able to bring him in to take care of a you know possible overrun or something it's really helpful um, I have two at the three spot that I like to use. A big game hunter kind of ruins, you know, the fat commander or, you know, the big fatty threat that's usually out on the board. His madness cost is also relevant sometimes, you know, when I need to discard down from certain cards. Um, the other one being Silvok, which helps to get rid of, you know, another pesky artifact, an enchantment, you know, that's kind of holding the board state down or is threatening, you know, how I do things. Uh... I forgot a four. Oh, oh well. Uh, there's a bunch of fours in here, but skipping to five, you know, you have slime, which is the same thing, you know, just during a land artifact, enchantment, you know, something that's in my way of, of getting what I need done. Uh, the oh, there's the four. <laughs> Solemn, you know, everybody loves a sad robot being able to search up a land and then draw or dredge. Really good. My other five, this tends to get a lot of notice when it hits the board, especially later on. Uh, there are certain cards in here that help make him incredibly evasive and pretty much him hitting the board with certain uh, certain situations will lead to a game win. Uh, six slot, you have Worm Coil, which is, you know, just a beater. And then, you know, when you pot him for something higher, you know, like Shieldred or... Uh, Butcher Malakir, you get a pair of tokens out of it, which is you know always good for chump blocks. Uh, this guy's another tokens kind of wipe. Uh, he tends to stick around a bit, which is nice. Um, and the loss of life tends to rack up really, really fast. Uh, Bitter Blossom, you know, there's a, a I put in a small token suite just to trying to keep things out because I tend to get a lot of things swinging at me and. Uh, you know, while I'm putting a lot of things in the graveyard, I don't generally have a whole lot of things out on the board, so I need to make sure that there's something at least in the way. So I have a Bitter Blossom, uh, Pawn of Ulamog, and an Awakening Zone to help deal with those kinds of issues. Um, and this is just kind of a card I threw in that's kind of a, a tech piece. Uh, the Errata says that, you know, while it says put into target opponent's graveyard, it actually... Uh, targets all opponents, so let's say I throw a um, Fleshbag Marauder out, um, he's still going to do uh, a great deal of damage and each one of those sacrificed creatures is going to gain me life, so that one damage at my upkeep really doesn't matter. So some draw and some ramp of uh, Arena helps to get things out fast. Greater Good's been amazing with uh, the dredge cards, especially being able to discard down, like I said, with uh, um, the big game hunter, um, being able to get rid of the dredgers and then drop him down. You know, this this deck's incredibly synergistic, and these cards can kind of go into multiple sections that I've told you about. So, this has been good.
Um, Realms Uncharted helps me pick up some lands that I need. Scrying helps me find that one. It's usually Urborg, so. Um, and then this last bit is a is a, a bit of a, a tech finale kind of piece. You know, uh, uh, a lot of people play with their graveyards now, so I look to remove them and then use Tombstone Stairwell to kind of flash through. And then especially with something like Grave Packed Out, it helps to keep the board nice and clean because they always once these are buried, they're not just like they don't just disappear. They're actually uh, they die at the end of the turn, so it makes it incredibly relevant. So, what I'm doing. so you have Nizumi, which flips and becomes a reanimator in itself, which is great. Uh, Tormod's Crypt can kind of combo out in terms of being able to play it, sack it, have someone sacrifice a creature, and then suddenly it's back out and doing it to someone else. Um, Scrabbling Claws, with the draw mechanic, it helps with dredge. So being able to get rid of those one pesky cards that I need to deal with. Uh, Withered Wretch helps to get rid of boards in mass and is quick and can be potted up uh, if uh, the my, my one slot guy isn't really doing it for me. Uh, and this helps with tokens in terms of blockers. Uh, and then finally, these are just a couple of cards that I've put in you know, just to help kind of finish things up. Uh, Lash Wrythe and Nightmare Lash are both really good in terms of once I get Urborg down, um, you know, they become incredibly relevant, especially if I put them either on Glissa or if I put them on Ink Moth Nexus for Poison. Um, they're both really, really good. Um, and they help with Alter Dementia, which, you know, if I have a lot of swamps out, I'm able to mill someone or myself for quite a bit. Um, Filth has been really good, especially with Urborg out. Um, the inclusion of Lord of Extinction makes this incredibly relevant, so it's quite a beat down. Unless someone exiles this from my graveyard specifically, it's really good. And then the last two cards, you know, are just kind of the Living Death suite. You know, being able to mill myself out over the course of the game, and then being able to drop one of these down, pretty much seals the deal for the deck. So it's really good. It's fast. Um, it has a lot of ways to win, and it has a lot of ways to deal with other cards without necessarily being a threat outright, which is really good. Hey guys, thanks for watching my redux of my Glissa deck. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at A underscore McGrinney, and be sure to also follow, like, and subscribe CMDR decks.